Did you know some of the first trains went only 10 miles an hour? And now we have trains that go hundreds of miles an hour. That is awesome. This one, definitely not one of those, but no. this invention did influence so many other things throughout history, from transportation, of course, but also mining and the movement of goods all over the country. Plus, there's these little guys in there. That is the conductor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Choo-choo! <laughs> Possibly the most important development of the Industrial Revolution is the steam engine. It facilitated major advancements in the fields of mining and manufacturing, agriculture and transportation. In fact, one of the most iconic artifacts at the Franklin Institute is our full-size Baldwin 60,000 locomotive train. You have like a whole train inside the building. Full-size engine. How did you get it in your building? We brought it into the building in 1933 while our building was being built left a wall open, so we brought the train across the city on little segments of track through the wall into the building and then closed the wall afterwards. Whoa, I bet you that was a sight to see. It was absolutely a sight to see because the cobblestones were so light compared to the weight of the train, they had to lay segments of tracks. So it took about five days to get the train from its location at Baldwin Locomotive Works into the Franklin Institute. So cool. Steam engines are pretty incredible across the board, right? I mean, the steam engine essentially is, uh, in this case, like a hot tube filled with water or fire, depending on how far back you go, and then smaller tubes that run through this system. And the idea is it's using that heat to create steam to power the engine. Luckily, now today, we don't have to worry about doing steam engines anymore. Now we can use diesel and other systems like electricity to move things around. So let's get into the timeline of these ingenious systems. In the first century AD, Hero of Alexandria invented the first primitive steam turbine in Greece. In the early 1600s, a Spanish mining administrator, Geronimo de Ayans, created a steam-operated machine that would solve the problem of flooded mines in Guadalcanal, Spain. In the early 1700s, the English wanted to improve mining as well, taking it from steam-operated to steam engines with Thomas Newcomen having the first successful machine that used steam to operate a water pump, which eliminated most explosions. In 1776, we have the Industrial Revolution and Scottish inventor James Watt. He added a second condenser to the steam engine. The Bolton Watt engine transformed England to be powered by steam, which made things a lot quicker. In 1804, Englishman Richard Trevithick launched the first practical steam locomotive, and it averaged only about 10 miles an hour. But that gave way to steamships. With the introduction of transcontinental travel, trains made the U.S. feel like one country and made the world feel a little bit smaller. Train travel was then used to do all sorts of things, like delivering the mail. But it got more complicated because now you could travel faster than the sun, which meant time zones needed to be established. The connectedness continued to grow in speed with transcontinental telegraphs by the 1860s ending the Pony Express. And into the 1890s, we see diesel locomotives come about, as well as electric trains with either overhead or third rail power. In 1964, Japan's first shikanasen, or bullet trains, opened to coincide with the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. In 1993, the Channel, a rail under the English Channel, allowed passengers to travel from Paris to London in only 2.5 hours. Today we have maglev trains. They're common in Japan, and they essentially stay on the track thanks to the power of magnetism. It's sort of like a box with magnets, right? They repel each other, keeping the train up in the air, which eliminates a problem with trains, and that is the friction between the rails and the train itself. Susanna, what do you think? Trains of old, trains of today, what's the most ingenious? So early trains were slow and loud and polluted our environment. The trains of today, we can go over 300 miles an hour. Trains of today, man. I mean, they're, they do seem magical. And I know this is weird, because like I feel like we're role reversing here, but like the old trains, so romantic and beautiful, and it changed the world. I, I, I don't know, I have to, I think the old trains are almost more ingenious. Plus, it's just, they look so good. They look so cool. 
<laughs> All right, you've convinced me. And what I wouldn't give to just go back and be a person on one of those trains, you know, just riding all the way across a whole continent, whether it's ours or Asia, you know, just incredible stuff. Trains, <laughs> they're so awesome.